Grade 4 math number 54, multiplication and equivalent fractions, and a bonus cookie recipe, so stay tuned. Okay, we're talking about equivalent fractions. I want to show you something really cool. If we've got two squares that are exactly the same size, and we color them in, where this one is half, because it's split into two parts, and this one is two-fourths because it's split into four parts and two parts are colored, they are actually the same size. Two-fourths is equal to one-half, see? Half of the squares are colored in green on both of them. To get the two-fourths mathematically, all we have to do is multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number. If we divide the one numerator by two, and the two denominator by two, the same number on the numerator and denominator, will get an equivalent fraction. One times two is two, two times two is four. One half is equal to two fourths. You have to multiply them by the same number though, okay? So now look, we've got a bunch of these circles. We know that half of this circle is colored in, but it's still colored in half and half and half and half and half, see? All the way down. Half of the circle is colored in, even though the circle is broken up into different parts. And this is how. Half of the circle, if you multiply it, the numerator by 2 and the denominator by 2, you get 2 fourths. 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4. Now look, if we multiply the numerator and denominator by 3, we get 3 6. 1 times 3 is 3, and 2 times 3 is 6. 3 are orange out of a total of 6, so 3 6 is equal to a half. If we multiply the numerator and denominator by 4, we get 4 eighths. See? Equivalent fraction. 4 eighths is the same thing as 1 half. If we multiply the numerator and denominator by 6, we get 6 twelfths. 6 twelfths is equal to 1 half. If we multiply the numerator and denominator of 1 half by 8, we get 8 sixteenths. 8 sixteenths is an equal equivalent fraction to a half. So just remember, when we multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number, we get an equivalent fraction. They want to be multiplied by the same number because one will get jealous if the other of the other if it doesn't get the same factor as the other because it would be more than. And it says, uh-uh-uh, if you get multiplied by 8, I want to get multiplied by 8. Okay? Now there's something else I want to show you before we get to our cookie recipe. If I had a third filled in, and a third filled in, and a third filled in, and then I had another third filled in in a second box, I would have 1, 2, 3, 4 thirds. See that? The numerator is allowed to be bigger than the denominator. Okay? When the numerator is bigger than the denominator, we have more than one whole. See? We have one and one-third. Four-thirds is equal to one and one-third. Isn't that crazy? This is actually called an improper fraction. Okay? Improper fractions, they're sometimes called umbrella fractions because an umbrella is, you know, big on the top. The numerator is bigger than the denominator, so it's either called an umbrella fraction or an improper fraction, but people really call them improper fractions. That's kind of a little kid term for it, okay? If it'll help you remember it, though, you can call it that. We don't care, as long as you understand that the numerator is bigger than the denominator, okay? So remember... If the numerator is bigger, it's an improper fraction, and it means there's more than one whole one there, okay? So let's get to our oatmeal cookie recipe, okay? There's lots of ingredients, and then I have the instructions down here on how to bake them, okay? But before we get to that, I want to explain what's going on. We lost our measuring cups and measuring spoons, and all we've got left in the drawer is a one-eighth measuring cup and a one-fourth measuring spoon. We have to figure out how much we would need of each of those to equal what the recipe is asking for, okay? So, 
It says what we need to do is you need to preheat the oven to 375 because they're going to bake for 10 to 12 minutes at 375 and we want to put them on a cookie sheet on a parchment paper once we go to bake them, okay? But it says what we need to do is cream together the wet ingredients in a large bowl and then in a separate bowl we have to sift the dried ingredients together. Then we slowly add the dry ingredients to the wet ingredients and look, you have to add the oatmeal, chocolate chips, and nuts last, okay? So the first thing we need to do is get the wet ingredients together. It says, and sugar is considered wet, okay, because it mixes with the butter. We need three-fourths cups of unsalted butter, but we don't have a, a fourth cup. We only have a one-eighth cup. How many of these are we going to need to get three-fourths, okay? So let's look at what we've got here. Here's our one-eighth measuring cup, but we need three-fourths of a cup, okay? Well, if we were to, con like, compare th uh, fourths to eighths, three-fourths is the same thing as one, two, three, four, five, six eighths. Each fourth is like two eighths, see? So how many eighth cups are we going to need for that three-fourths of butter? We're going to need six of them, okay? So in order to get three-fourths cups of butter, we need six eighths cups of butter, okay? We need one-fourth cup of shortening. So how many eighths is that? One-fourth is the same thing as two eighths. It's just, see, the line's not there. So if we need one-fourth cup of shortening, that means we need two-eighths cups of shortening. See? So even though we don't have the correct measuring cups, we can do this if we understand our fractions. We need a half a cup of brown sugar. How many eighth cups is that? Well, a half a cup is equal to four-eighths. Okay? So we need four-eighths. See? It's the same thing as a half. We need a fourth of a cup of granulated sugar. Well, we know that that is like the shortening, so that's a two. All right. You need to throw in an egg. We need one teaspoon of vanilla, but we only have a one-fourth teaspoon measure. So how many of these do we need to get one teaspoon? Well, look at this. If it's split into four parts and you've got four-fourths, you've got one whole. See? So we need four-fourths. We're going to need to put four of these little one-fourth measuring spoons in to get a whole teaspoon. We need one and one-fourth cups flour. Okay? Now, what does a fourth mean? Do you remember what a fourth means? It means two-eighths. But we need a whole one and a one-fourth. So, we're going to need one, two, three, four-fourths plus another fourth. Right? A whole one would be equal to all eight of these, plus another fourth would be two more eighths. So eight, nine, ten eighths. See that? Ten eighths is going to be one and one-fourth cups flour. We need one teaspoon of baking soda, and we know that four-fourths is equal to one. We need one teaspoon of salt. We, knew, we know that's four-fourths. We need a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Okay, a half is equal to two-fourths, see? One half is the same thing as two-fourths. And we need an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg, but we only have a one-fourth teaspoon. So you know what we're going to have to do? We're not going to be able to use that. We're going to have to fill the one-fourth teaspoon if this is the teaspoon, we're going to fill it halfway with the nutmeg, see? Because this is a one-fourth one, and we only need half of it. So we're going to fill it halfway with the nutmeg, okay? Then we need two cups of oatmeal, one cup of chocolate chips that we add after the oats, and we need a half a cup of pecans if you want, okay? So you mix all the wet ingredients together, you mix all the dry ingredients, sift it into a separate bowl. You slowly add the flour and the dry ingredients, like the baking powder and stuff, to the wet stuff. Once you get it all mixed up, you add the oatmeal. It's going to be real thick. 
You stir in some chocolate chips. That's going to be real thick and hard to stir in also, and you can add nuts if you want to. Then you take spoonfuls of them, and you plop them down on the parchment paper, however big you want your cookies to be, and you bake them for 10 to 12 minutes at 375. And you will have some delicious Joanne's recipe oatmeal cookies. So now you can see how fractions can be similar and equivalent to other fractions. So let's take a look at what we did here. One half is equal to four eighths. Why? Well, we had the one half and we multiplied both sides by four, the numerator and the denominator. One times four is four, two times four is eight. We got four eighths. Here, the one fourth is equal to two eighths because we multiplied the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator by two. One times two is two, four times two is eight. Look at that. Three fourths is equal to six eighths because we multiplied the numerator and denominator by two. Three times two is six, four times two is eight. Three fourths equals six eighths. Okay? And on this one, one half is equal to two fourths because we multiplied the numerator and denominator by two. One times two is two, two times two is four. So remember, you have to multiply by the numerator and denominator by the exact same number. You can't multiply the numerator by two and the denominator by three. That won't work. The three, the two is going to get jealous that it got multiplied. The three got multiplied, you know, more. The denominator got multiplied by the three. So always make sure if you're trying to make equivalent fractions that you multiply them by the exact same number for the numerator and the denominator. Okay. If you want to copy my cookie recipe, you can pause the video now, and I'll see you next video. We're going to continue talking about fractions. See you later. Hope you enjoy the cookies. Bye.